Hey everybody, Jeremy up here at Cowtown. Today what I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is some of our stock model of boats. Um, I'm going to start with this boat. This is an 18 by 60 flat bottom. We call this our bass boat model. Um, reason being, obviously it's got a lot of bass boat features. Um, not only bass fishing, but a lot of pleasure boating, crappie fishing, kind of whatever you want to do. But it does come with a 5 foot front deck. It is pre-wired for your trolling motor up here with the trolling motor mount. It's also got 12 volts on the front. It's uh, got a trim switch up on the front as well. Now this boat has a front live well. This live well is 27 inches long. It is 8 inches deep and 8 inches wide. So it's, a, it's an aerated live well. It's insulated live well. It's a very, very good for bait fish. Um, crappie fishing as well. If you need to hold three limits of crappie in this boat, you can do it. Um, as you can fill it up with water, it helps you ride if you're running across some rough water. So there's a lot of great options um, you can use that live well for other than just a live well. If you go to the lid behind it here, this is going to be dry storage. And whenever I say dry storage, what I mean by that is all of these boxes have a drip rail all the way around it. And it's got a tube that goes down underneath the subfloor. So whenever it rains, it keeps 90% of the water out of there. Um, I can't tell you it's completely dry. You will get a little bit of condensation here or there in your dry boxes. They are all carpeted on the inside, um, so nothing's going to be sliding around back and forth and uh, keeps all your stuff in better shape at that point. It is pre-wired uh, to the front deck, so it's got uh, four-strand wiring, whether you want to use that for speakers, if you wanted to install a stereo, um, whether you want to use it for interior lighting inside your dry storage boxes, a couple different options you can do there. Moving back into uh, the back part of the front deck right here, this is another dry storage box. Now, uh, we'll try to tip the camera up here so you can see it a little bit better. But this is a, uh, a longer box. You know, it is actually the same size lid as the rod box on the other side, but this is not a rod box. Um, it's just hard to work a rod in around the console to get it in. So this is a great tackle storage box for Plano boxes, life jackets, ropes, whatever you feel uh, the need to throw in there, you can do. And these also have locking latches. Your rod locker, all of your storage boxes all have locking latches so you can keep your things safe if you're staying, staying the night at a hotel or whatever it may be. Now in the floor of the boat, we've got two seat pedestals, or seat bases, I'm sorry. Now uh, the way these work, you can take these seats in and out, whether you need to be using them for riding, uh, riding people, you can fit five people comfortably in this boat, or there's also seat bases on the front deck and rear deck. You can use these for your fishing seats once you get to your, your fishing spot. You know, uh, all of our bass boat models, we do include some seat pedestals. So you can uh, be ready to hit the water and go fishing. Now over on the port side or the passenger side of the boat, that is your rod locker. It does have rod tubes, so it keeps everything uh, organized. You know, you're, you're not a big cluster in there with all your rods and reels being tangled up and just pulling out a big ball. You can keep everything a little bit more organized that way. Um, moving back, you do have our starboard side console. Now we uh, this is our standard model, single console. Ninety-five percent of the boats we do are single console, but we can custom order you a boat with a dual console if need be. Um, biggest reason I don't get a lot of guys want dual consoles, it just takes up a lot of the floor space in this 18 and a half foot boat. So um, with that being said, this is our standard setup. This does come with a bass boat faceplate. Now, uh, it's got a different gauge package per boat. The reason I say that is because we do offer a few different engine lines. This particular boat's got a Suzuki 140 horsepower engine on it. Um, we also offer Mercury now, and we're still selling some of our leftover Edwards also. So uh, that's kind of going to depend on your gauge package, um, tachometer wise, anyhow. You know, we've got a speedometer option, just depending on if you would like to have the speedometer with the PDOT tube fed off water pressure on the back of the boat. All of our bass boat models do come with a fuel gauge, um, so that's pretty standard stuff. The bottom of the panel, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but we do have some switches over here. We've got navigation light switches, we've also got a bilge pump, which is on a switch, not auto. Um, we've got aerator, now this aerator is also on a timer. So you've got a manual aerator, as well as you can flip it on a timer. It'll run for a couple minutes, shut off, and then it'll run for a couple more minutes. You know, keeps the fresh water in your, in your live wells. Then it's got an accessory switch also, which right now is wired up to a light on the side of the console. Um, you can switch that around. You could wire it up to interior lights if you wanted to add them later down the road, um, stereo, whatever you want to do, you've got that accessory switch to use. 
So uh, that's pretty well it for the console. It does have anti-feedback uh, helm. What that means is you can turn it from the steering wheel, your engine will turn, but you don't feel the torque from the engine. So not that I recommend this, but you can run down the river, let go of the steering wheel. It's not going to shove you right into the bank uh, in a right turn. So a lot safer and a lot easier to operate. It makes it so somebody that's just getting into jet boating, you can get into the boat, you can run it and feel comfortable running it versus really having to work at it to drop. So uh, that's about it for the console. You step back a little bit to what we call the jump seats, um, where we've got all of our seating. Now this does change a little bit per model. We've always got a driver's seat and a passenger seat, which is standard. There are options. We can put a center seat on the center lid here. Now, different models have different features underneath the boat. You flip these lids up, we have dry storage here. This 60 inch bottom boat, we do put a cooler in the center, standard. Now, in our 52 and our 56 inch bottom boats, we generally run them just dry storage all the way across. That's kind of personal preference. I can do coolers, and uh, if you want to custom order one with the cooler in the center, we could do that. Just kind of depends on what you'd like to do. Uh, very handy to have that center cooler, just depending on what you're what you're doing. So that's pretty well it for um, the jump seats. They're pretty standard stuff. You jump back to the rear deck. The front of the rear deck, we have got our big live well. Um, one of the biggest live wells on the market right now for an aluminum outboard jet boat. This is 40 inches long. It is 12 inches wide and 12 inches deep. It is aerated. It is insulated. Um, it does have a divider in the middle as well. I know I talked a little bit earlier about crappie fishing. You can hold two limits of crappie back here. Or you can pull that center divider if you're catfishing. You get a lot of people go out catfishing with these boats. So you can throw a bigger boat in, or a bigger fish in there, um, whether it be a catfish, gar, big buffalo, whatever you're doing, you can do. So uh, very, very good live well. We've had a lot of compliments on that over the years. In the back, back here, um, this is going to be kind of our rear storage area. This has got a 30 gallon aluminum built in fuel tank. So this is something that we kind of changed up over, so we had some 16 gallons, some 20 gallons, some 24 gallons, and I've got a lot of guys that are wanting to run 100 plus miles. Um, all of our engines get great fuel economy, but whenever you're doing an overnight boat trip or just wanting to run that far, you just need more fuel. Um, the aluminum tanks, they're not going to retract or expand on you. So they're in a lot, a lot better, you know, class than what we what we used to do back in 2000. So a lot better set up there. It is a remote fill, so you shouldn't have to open up this rear deck lid for much. You know, you put your fuel in on the uh, passenger side corner gusset and take off. So you've got your battery back here also. You know, there's plenty of room back here for trolling batteries. If you wanted to put a 36 volt trolling motor with three trolling batteries back here, you've got plenty of room to do so as well as onboard charging systems. We've had guys put um, power poles on the back of them or talon shallow water anchors. You've got plenty of room to do all of that. So very nice back, uh, back half here. Now, other than the features, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of this boat. Talked about all the interior layout, now it gets down to the stuff that really sells these boats for us. You know, we have bigger corner gussets. This is a 30 plus inch corner gusset. So what a lot of people don't understand on these boats is they, they are powerful. They've got a lot of power pushing on them, but they don't take into consideration whenever they're bouncing up and down a gravel road at 40 mile an hour. So that is a huge, um, huge benefit that we have here. for everybody else is having these rear corner guns. Now we start getting into the knee braces on the back. That is what's going to prevent any crackage from the power of the engine pushing on the boat. Now we have those integrated down into the, uh, the runners of the boat which what I mean by runners is these have longitudinal runners going up and down the boat as well as the standard horizontal runners. So what that's going to do is that's going to prevent any kind of cavitation marks in the bottom of the boat over time, um, which I've seen it a lot, especially older boats. A lot of the newer, cheaper boats you see it, you know, you might have a boat for five years and just the pressure of the water will push up the aluminum in between the ribs, which causes cavitation. You lose a lot of performance over a short period of time. So uh, with us running them that way, structuring them that way, it really helps out as far as the overall performance over its whole life of the boat, whole lifespan. So um, back to the, to the knee braces back here. These are wrap around knee braces. They wrap all the way around the transom. They aren't just scabbed onto the transom to look cool. You know, they're wrapped around the back of the transom as well as the rear deck. 
this rear deck is welded to the corner or the uh, knee braces. Um, then they're welded into the bottom of the boat. So that is one piece. You know, this is one big structured rear end. So there's not going to be any cracking. We don't have any cracking on the uh, on the corner gussets here or at the top where you see a lot of them uh, crack and break. You know, that is why on our bass boat models we put a lifetime warranty on it. So I mean. You know, we put a lifetime warranty on them because we don't have any issues out. You know, I'll be totally honest with you there. We just don't see any problems, don't see any crackers, don't see any structure issues. Um, these boats just hold up well for us, you know. Over the past 20 years, we've had some trial. We've had a minimal amount of error, but, you know, we've uh, came into the boat that we've got today, which is, has been great for us, you know. I've put them to the test. I've ran them into the dirt and came back out on the other side, and they've done a great job for us. Uh, so I do want to talk a little bit about motors on the back. You know, this is something I'm going to touch a little briefly on just because we are offering a few different options. You know, Suzuki, we have taken on this year. Mercury, we're taking on this year. And uh, Evandrude, which, you know, aren't producing any engines right now, but we still do have some of those left over. So that's something that's going to be some big options. This 140 performs amazing on the back of this 18 and a half foot boat, 60 inches wide, does awesome. You know, you can run those on the 1752s, which we'll touch base on uh, on those boats in a separate video. But that's going to be pretty much it, guys, as far as uh, as far as walkthrough on the boat, the options of this particular setup. You know, I'll touch base on a lot of different stuff, trailers and everything else in some more videos. So if you have any questions at all, um, by all means, this is going to be kind of a, some virtual stuff that we're getting into. We're doing a lot of. Give us a call. You can ask for me. You can ask for Doug. Uh, anybody here would be glad to help you. Give us a call, 573-885-6300.